this is, look, I'm going to be doing a lot of crying, okay? Just get used to it. Because this is a very emotional topic for me because the Lord did so much. And the topic is developing the heart of leaders. So let me start with a word of prayer. Most gracious and heavenly Father, I thank you for the honor and the privilege to share your word. I'm grateful that you saw it fit to put me in this ministry, to serve these children and the women of my nation and people all over the world. Thank you that you prepared my heart. You took away all the hurt and the pain that I dealt with before I came into this ministry, Lord. I thank you for the opportunity to help others to know that we are all leaders, but there are steps and things that we have to go through to be ready to do that which he's called us to. I thank you for this body and all the blessing they've been to this ministry. And as they have blessed and given to these children, I know you are going to bless them exceedingly abundantly beyond anything that they can ask or think. Thank you for Pastors Van and Regina, for all of their love and support, and for all of my friends and family all around the world who have been helping us to be where we are right now. For my husband, Lord, I thank God for the man that you've given me, the husband that loves me truly like Christ loved the church, and I know he will give his life for me. Thank you, Lord, for my children. Thank you for everything that you have provided us with. And today, this word will bring a great healing to others and hope to those who are looking to step out. And to those of you watching online, may God bless everything you do. And that one day, we will see you here in the sanctuary. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so my topic today is developing the hearts of leaders. I'm going to be doing a lot of reading because there were things that were in my heart that I just don't want to forget and would like to share. Amen? And it's been a great journey for my husband and I from when God brought us together as husband and wife and how quickly things changed. We both came from two separate backgrounds. I came from Sierra Leone, of course. Lots of culture, lots of traditions, things that I didn't even knew was embedded in me that needed to be peeled, peeled out, so the real masquerade that is on the inside will emerge. My husband had the same things that he was working through. We went to college. We were excited about the things of God. We wanted to go out in the world and take on the world. But how many of you know, because you have knowledge, it has to go to the heart so it can be transformed for you and the people you serve. So that's the one thing that I had to learn early on in ministry, that I was not called to build a ministry. I had undue pressure of wanting to know everything that God wanted us to do in this ministry, step by step. Tell me how long this is going to take. When am I going to do that? This clearly was not coming from the Lord. It was coming from my eagerness and my natural way of doing things. This was just my way. I, okay, I'm a realtor. I'm, I'm a broker. We're buying a house. How long is it going to take to build? What is the steps? And I took that into ministry. And the Lord had to teach me that this is coming from my own insecurities. I, know I was not resting, neither was I trusting. But at least I had sense enough to know where to go. I went to the Word. I asked the Lord, help me to remain in your rest. Help me to understand how much you love me and to trust you without wavering. Because you've heard all of, you've had all of this teaching, all of this knowledge, now you need to apply it into your life. It needs to become life to you. It needs to be something that will transform your life and the hearts of the leaders 
like my babies. Hey guys, I love you. I miss you all so much. Oh. We are called to enter into a relationship with the Father. And as we share our heart of love towards ourselves, towards one another, it will cause the people that we minister to to truly begin to identify with who they are. Our love, the way we love one another, the way we care for each other, the way we treat them. Bible says we will know them by their love. And that is the steps of developing the heart of a leader, by your love. It's not about hours of teaching, hours of pounding, hours of just, oh, you got to know this, you have to know that. They need to know the love of God. Amen. You need to have it in your heart. And as that is in your heart, people can learn just by walking with you. I know this because it's happening with me right now in Sierra Leone. They learn more by my actions than my words. My love is much, much greater than anything else that I can offer these children. It is never our job to fix ourselves or others. Our job is to let the love of God that has already been shed abroad in our hearts permeate the hearts of people. There is nothing in this world that is too hard for the Lord. That's why it gets me so angry when I see Christians panicking when they're saying that these are perilous times, but it says it's exciting time for us. But we look just like the world, and I don't understand this. Whenever I come to America, I, honestly, I miss you guys so much. You guys are my reason to be here. And after that, I'm ready to go. Because I, I, I get, I'm like, these people get the word every day. They hear you. They have an experience with you daily. They have everything that they need. There's... The, be the worst day for the poorest person in America is probably the best day for the half wealthy man in Africa. And yet they smile, yet they have fun, and yet they're not consumed with the worries of the world. They stand, what is COVID? We didn't know. <laughs> I went on, but because our hearts were wired to depend on one, and that's the one true God. So today I want to tell you, says Psalms 120, 127, 1 says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain, who built it? Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman st says, awake in vain. You stay awake in vain, turning the wheels, fixing yourself. I want to go into all the world and spread the gospel. Rest in the love of God. Let him teach you. Because the word said, and all, not some, but all of our children will be taught of the Lord. Are you a child of God? And then what comes with that? And great will be the peace of your children. It's for you. It's for your grandchildren. It's for the people you will interact with. It's for everyone, whosoever will. So as we are trained and developed to serve, areas of hurt, pain, disappointment, unforgiveness will be exposed. Yes. And you want that to happen before you step into that lead role of a leader. Because as it is exposed, it is mended. Because that's one thing the devil would want to come back and use, because I'm going to show you how he tried to do that to me. But I am no match for that foolishness, because I know whose I am. For us to experience total peace and freedom and before, become effective in ministry, we have to lay all the weight, everything that besets you. Allow the Lord to, keep, to, to just heal your heart and by casting not some, but all of your cares all of your cares to the Lord because he cares for you. I have 30 people that we feed on a daily basis. The children, 
the great men and women that God has brought to help me. And they love my kids. Because that's one thing I had to have. I needed someone that could love my children. There was no negotiating. If they want to eat, they eat. Don't tell me it's too much. Let them eat. The people that send the money are OK with them eating. So let them eat. So it's important that we as leaders understand who we are. We as leaders know that the people we say we serve are watching. I'm not so much trying to guilt us, oh, everybody's watching. But it's important that we know that. Because of bad leadership, we have tremendous ministries that are hurting today. Because what they've learned is what they've taught. And it goes on and on and on. And at some point, it has to stop. My husband and I know leaders personally, great teachers in the word, who just refuse to allow the Lord to heal their wounds because of what they've experienced and they've now been tormented by the enemy and has actually crippled their ministries. Because of these horrible life experiences that they've had, they've gone on to really hurt people. They treat them like possession. Do what I say. They were extremely mean and controlling. They refused to submit themselves to the Lordship of God and to know that he can make it all better. And guess what happened? I, at least two of them have lost their marriages. And their children and families' life has been destroyed simply because we will not trust God to help us to be the best leaders that we need to be. Everyone in this room, no matter how young or old, you are a leader. You are a leader in some space, whether your friends, your work, the people you serve. We are leaders of this great message of grace. And we have been given something that the world needs, that our family needs that our children needs. I say it again, if you do not allow the Lord to heal the hurt, the disappointment, the frustration you experience it, you are bound to destroy not just your life, but you will hurt the people you serve. This is a timely message for all of us today. We have to look in this word, watch what Jesus did. Look at the way he loved. Look at the way he served. He was loving and stern because he, he kicked some tables over. I, know, I, know, I read that in the Bible. He did not put up with foolishness, but he was love. Proverbs 13, 12 says that hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when the desire comes, it is what? A tree of life. A desired fulfilled is the tree of life. When all the pain, when all the hurt has been that you have deferred, when you decide to let him do the work, the desire that you get, when that is fulfilled, it is truly a tree of life. So all of these lessons that I learned, coupled with help, has really taken me. Help of pastors, Andrew Womack's ministries, my friends, my village, the ones that I've called when I'm having the moments. And I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? Meltdown, let's call it what it is. <laughs> but there they are. You created, uh, you, uh, you surrounded yourself with like-minded people who are able to hold you up. At 3 a.m. in the morning, I know if I pick up that phone, I can count on my pastors to answer. I know if I pick up that phone, my dear friend Sharon J. and all these great people, Alice Davis, yeah. Alice Davis, hey Alice, <laughs> they will answer because we are of the same mind. Deborah wakes up at night and said, I was just thinking about you. 
the timely word that you gave me, Vicky, about separation. It started before I left here, and even more separation when I got there. Surround yourself with people that can see. Because remember, in this ministry, I'm serving, but also there's all of these emotional attachments that sometimes can slow you down to make decisions. But then when you hear from God or others around you say, hey, abort that mission, you know what that means. You know that person has to go because God has spoken. Because sometimes we delay to end things that need to end right away. We take time. We try to pray about it. You know what you need to do. You don't need to pray. You need to act. And we delay what the word is saying. But with all of this learning and all of the teaching and all of the development, there was still a nagging lie in the ears of the devil, because it's not in my ear, trying to tell me what is missing in the ministry I'm about to go after. That, oh, did you consider this? Like Jesus, led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil after he's fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And here come this fool. Are you the son of God? Show me. That's what I was experiencing here. He was trying to contend for the truth of God's word by telling me what I don't have or what will make this not work. But let me tell you the first lie. It's easier for people with ch who raise children from birth because they've known them and he knows the word. They knew them from the womb and I've nurtured them and they know everything about them. They know their smiles, they know when they're hurt, they, you, they know how to respond to them. Do you know that? You're taking on children, they don't have those. How are you gonna know how to help them? How are you going to navigate to make them successful? It is not my burden to bear, but the one that called me. And he says, you, are, you have children who have been exposed to all of the finer things in life, and they are going to be just the ones to take on the market of your country. Your children have nothing. How are they going to compete? Thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God, because that's what you're doing right now. And then he says, now you're dealing, these, some of these things we know could be true. Facts, really. And then the next one. You're dealing with children that have been through rough things in life. They are dealing with deep-rooted cultures and traditions that they are so dear, that are so dear to their hearts that they may not even want to let go of. Now, how do you deal with that? First of all, my job is not to go fix them. I had to remind myself of that because there is the tendency. We see people hurting so bad and we go into fixing mode. But you know what the Holy Spirit did? I love the Holy Spirit. It took me to the Word. He said, well, let's see what Jesus did with this grown man that he didn't birth and how he got them to follow him. Let's read Matthew 4, 18 to 23. Let me see. Actually, 18 to 22, I'm sorry. All right, it said, did I say 18? Yeah. All right, I hope I copied this for, all right, okay, we're on the same page. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. 
they went immediately, left their nets, and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of De Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they too left the boat and their father and followed him. You have to know the word. Because everything he was saying could be easily taken. Well, you know, that's true. I didn't raise these kids. I wasn't there when they were born. They've gone through all this thing. How in the world am I going to do it? But there is an answer in the word. There is an answer in the word. God has the ability to change anything, any circumstance. It's not for you to try to figure it out. Maybe you have to consider the fact, yes, they've been hurt. Yes, these things have happened. But that's why we are here, to show them the one that loves them. And he is not the reason they are hurt. He's not the one that took advantage of them. Even if the pain they're feeling came from their own parents, they need to understand that it is not Jesus. Are we supposed to be an example to our children and point them to the Lord? Sure. We are their first ever example of love. It is the way it should be. They are to be nurtured in the home, given the tools and everything that they need to be the best leaders that they could. But if it's lacking in us, if it's lacking in us, we have to point them to the word and honestly say, baby, this is what I was taught. It may have not been right, but let's learn together and stop faking. Let's learn together. Instead of saying, I've been in the church for 50 years. Well, that means nothing if it's not founded on the grace and love of God. And you young people, you better let no one despise your youth. Don't you let anyone despise your youth. You have Jesus like we all do. And you know what? You will do greater works. You are going to go far beyond that we can ever imagine. And I am sitting here just excited, excited. Now let's look at Matthew, uh, Matthew 9, 9 to 12. I'm not going to take long because I try to keep this really short. And I think I'm missing verse 13 on this one. That's what it's. So Matthew 9, verses 9 to 13. Teresa, I said 12, but it's actually 13. Now we're talking about the tax collector, the special wicked sinners, as some call them in the Bible. How can God get in the way of that? These are the bad kids you're going to encounter in Sierra Leone. They're criminals. They're this. They're that. No, they're not. They're, some kids may have been misguided. Some kids may have not had much, many options, and they looked for ways just to survive. That's not something anyone in this room probably have ever gone to. I, I don't, let me see a hand of, a show of hand of someone that has gone a week without food. I don't see any. No, fasting is the choice. Have you gone a week without food because you don't have it? Well, I know people that have gone longer. I have children that have gone longer without food, and it makes me sad. And they have to still work. They have to come from school, go to the farm, finish the work, and then maybe you eat. Wow. When these kids tell me these stories, we've gotten to the point where they can talk to me. At first, I'm in the room, they would be there, and I'm here and just can't come close because it's not allowed. It's not the culture. You kids don't get in the same room with adults. Go over there. You're not picking. Go sit down by under. That's what they'll tell you. And I had to break all these barriers and say, son, come here. That's what I called him. Daughter, son, mommy loves you. I told all their chick they used to do this, fight me off, because they're not used to like, like, you know, they're not used to that. Now I can get enough hugs. And every conversation is, love you, mommy. When I call them on, video, on, on, on audio calls, they're like, well, just call us back when you can do video, because we want to see your face. Do you know what that does to my heart? That they want to see my face. 
couple of days I've been not really, I was struggling with some symptoms. I had to go to the emergency room just a few days ago. Pastors prayed over me, the children prayed over me, and one of them were crying. I said, no, 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 don't cry. Mommy will be back. You can count on that. But then they all immediately said, Mommy, let's pray for you. They prayed because they have been taught to know God for themselves. They are not going to depend on me. I will be out of here, if nothing else, even 80 years. Then what? So they need to know God for themselves. And they prayed such an incredible prayer. I was, that was, these are my proud moments. The house and all of that is great. But knowing that they know God. When I got on that plane, flying, coming to America, right before I hung up, mommy, we don't hang up. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for our mom. Thank you for blessing her. And thank you that Jesus is the pilot on the plane. He will take her safely to dad. Everywhere, these are words exactly from these children. They're watching. They will tell you if I'm lying. Everywhere their foot tread is blessed. And you will provide for the donors. You will provide for them as they are blessing us to finish our building. Their lives, will, there's never a day my children pray that they don't pray for you guys. They thank God for the donors. They thank God for mommy and dad. They thank God for our safety in Sierra Leone. They thank God for our safety wherever we are. We are praying for the people that God, and those people that build and help us build. They have begun to appreciate the workers. We thank you for the people that are building for us. And then they go on the boat, they're on the ground and work with them. They don't just say, well, if mommy's paying you. They work with them. This is how we develop the hearts of leaders. They have to be able to understand. And I do it. I work with the people. I do the same thing that I'm telling them they need to do. So by that, they understand. Let's read Matthew 9, 9 to 12. I think. Nine to 13, I'm sorry. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, follow me. So he arose and followed him. Now it happened as Jesus sat at the table in the house that behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees, well, of course, when they saw it, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard this, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician's physician, but those who are sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. There was no, not a hint of insecurity to be found in Jesus. When he was mocked, accused by the Pharisees, he was sure of who he was, and he could not be moved. So Jesus did not come for the self-proclaimed righteous ones, but for those that were sick. The tax collectors, they were considered the crooks and the misfit of the day. And in some translation, it said that Jesus was at Matthew's house. He met him and they went to his home. So that would explain why all these other tax collectors and people were there. He didn't wait to see, let's see how well he shapes up before I show up at his house. He immediately met with him. Matthew accepted Jesus because Jesus first loved him. Simon Peter, Andrew, James, and John accepted Jesus because Jesus first loved them. We are eight people. They will know us by our love. We want to be leaders. Allow first the Lord to work in your heart. 
So when you look, you're not count, okay, white, black, Hispanic. You see people, God's people. Yeah. Cut all that mess out. Yeah. See God's people. And when I say God's people, I'm even talking about the one that don't know him yet because he wants them. He created them. They may not make the choice to come be with him, but he loves them. Even with their decision to never accept him, he loves them. And we need to remember that. Jesus desired mercy, not religion. Let's have mercy. Let's express God's heart to people. Because my confidence is growing in the Lord, and I know I'm being equipped for the work of the ministry, now I can stand. Now my confidence is in him. It's not in how many years I spent in Bible college. I went to Caris in 2005. I left around 2018. I was the, the, the coordinator. I ran the entire school. I taught lessons. I did all of that. My husband was the dean of student. And I had to a service. We are called to servanthood. We served. We went on to other things. Greater and greater and greater things God has for each of us. Do not worry about your calling. If you are here today and said, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Oh Lord, I don't know. Put your hand to something. Amen. This is the body. Every day, there is a message here on Sunday, every Sunday, text to serve. Serve. Just serve. Do something, and if you feel like, hmm, maybe not, try different ministries within the church, and then discover what that is. And don't overthink it. Because anything you do for the Lord is good. Amen. We put ourselves in a box. Oh, I got to be a pastor. Well, you need to be. Do you? Do you? Just open your heart and be willing to love, be willing to give, be willing to serve, and know that you will never run dry. You will never be empty because it will continue to fill your heart. Feel everything that is, there's not a drought, a moment of drought in your life. And I say this to people all the time. When they're talking about, oh my gosh, what's gonna happen if you go to Sierra Leone? And this happened and that happened. I said, I could be in the center of Iraq. If I'm in the will of God, I'm in the best place on earth. So you better know that. It's not your destiny, it's not where you are. It's who's with you that matters. He's with me wherever I go. They break houses, they break into houses everywhere in, my, in, 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 in Bo, breaking in. I am well known, as they call the queen of Bo. I am well known. I'm an American. They don't consider me a Sierra Leonean. And I am rich in their minds. I'm wealthy. How many of you know in the natural, I'm the target for the devil? But I tell you what. The Lord has raised men and women around me. These children truly love me, and they love their dad. And you mess with me, I'm not going to say this, I'm on camera. <laughs> John 14, 27. Let God's peace rule in everything that we do. John 14, 24 says, peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Let peace be your umpire. When in doubt, go back to the word. The cornerstone of our ministry is servanthood. Just be willing to serve. When you don't have an answer in a situation, just keep serving. And it's in the moments where, oh, okay, he speaks. The Holy Spirit lives within us. He communicates. 
It, it, we are never, ever going to be in situations where we don't have answers. The only time there is no answer is because you're probably in the way. You're trying to fix it. I know this because I'm a real time fixer. I go in the house, I'm like, rest as we tell you, we've done this together before. Oh, well, let's do this. That's what I do. And I got to the point where I said, okay, Holy Spirit. One of the misconceptions that all of us have is, oh, I went to school for 15 years. I have my master, I have my PhD, I have my doctorate. I can handle those pretty well. Just help me in the things I don't know, Lord. Do not be deceived. Because those are the very things you need to surrender to the Lordship of God. Because while you're sitting there reading five books to determine it, he can give you one word to fix that situation just like that. Give everything that you have to the Lord. Leave nothing out, people. That is the true stamp of a real leader. You don't have ego. You don't have, you're not pompous and proud. You give it to him because it all belongs to him anyway. You are just a steward. Know your place and stay there because it's a beautiful place to know that I'm being cared for. I'm loved. I'm protected just by being a daughter. Just by being a daughter. Your position, royal priesthood, we are a holy nation. For God is with us. Who in this world can be against us? If we can all stand and understand who we are, if we can all really begin to walk out these things in our own hearts, if we allow the Holy Spirit to get in the way of our things, the things we're holding in our little boxes, can you imagine what we can do together? Do you know what this place, this world would look like with all of us walking in our true identity? I want to really exhort you this morning because I am surrounded by things that some of you will never ever consider being the, you won't even stay in their country for two days oh my god I gotta go to America oh my god and I have been able to thrive I'm happy being there I'm so excited I told my husband I miss three things when I'm not in, in, in Sierra Leone Oh, I miss you guys. If I can bundle you guys up and take all of you, and if I can take a few friends, a few family, <laughs> I will never come back. And that's the truth. That is the real truth. This is an American man who will never leave this country. That's what I think. But I tell you, that's when you know you are right in the perfect will of God. I, I do hope one day each of you will help, will be able to come to that country because the ministry is so needed over there. Please pray and ask the Lord because I want to have missionaries there all the time, all the time because I have a country of 8 million people that are dying. They don't know it. They don't know it. Today my children are able to teach they're able to share. They're able to tell others about the word of God. They tell their friends. When, they, when I send them to church, because I hardly go to church in Sierra Leone, I watch messages here. But I send them because, and then I come back. They all go with notebooks. What did you hear? What did the teachers, what did the pastor say? Mom, guess what the pastor says? He said, we have to give to be blessed. I said, what do you say? We are giving because we are blessed. I'm like, mm, that's my boy. This is what I do. I let them go. Come back. What did you hear that didn't seem as different from what you've learned here? God put sickness on you. What do you know? By his stripes we are healed. Yes. We can't, we can't just keep them bundled up. They're going to go out and hear some of these things. But be, and that's how they grow. We just cannot keep them just around everybody. My friend, my kids have to only be around Christians. So when do they get to go to the world? When? There are Christians that proudly tell you, I don't know anybody that's not saved. And that's a shame for you to proudly tell the world, I don't know anybody that's not saved. All my friends are saved. Great. But do you have anyone that you can tell Jesus to, that you can share the word to? It's not a badge of honor. It's not something to be bragging about. It's a shameful thing. I'm sorry. I'm an African. We're bold. We don't hold back. 
That's how we preach. We don't sugarcoat it. It is what it is. We all should. The, the only thing I can say is you don't have to leave looking like them. So don't go like the Lord sent me to the world. The next thing I know, you were like, uh-uh, that's not what I'm talking about. You are going to make a difference. You are going to be a light in the dark. You're not conforming. You're helping people transform. There's a difference. Because I've heard people say things about the reason why they go to play. No, let's not even go there. And let me read my last scripture. 1 Peter 5. And this is talking about shepherding the flock. He said, the elders who are among you I exhort. Hi, who am a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God, which is among you. Serve as overseers, not by compulsion, not willingly, not for this honest gain, but eagerly. Nor as being Lord over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Submit to God. Resist the devil. Likewise, you young, younger people, submit yourself to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but God gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, and he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon the Lord. He cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like, like, not a lion, but like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same suffering I experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered for a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. By Sylvanus, our faithful brother, as I consider him, I have written to you briefly, exhort and testifying that this is the true grace of God in which you stand. She who is in Babylon, elects um, together with you, greets you, and so does Mark, my son. Greet one another with a kiss, with a kiss of love. Peace to you, all who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. So this is what God is telling us. We are to be example to the flock. Love them, care for them, submit to God. The devil is a defeated foe. Young folks, submit to the lordship of the people, the leadership of the people you have, and then to God. Of course, God first, always. Be sober. The devil is looking for every opportunity to snatch people around. Don't be one of them. We have a mighty God. We have a loving Father. We have a, a, a great counselor. We have the Holy Spirit. And there are a few things I want to say, and then I'll wrap it up. Developing the hearts of leaders starts with the leaders having an identity in Christ and not in what they do. You have to allow the love of the Father to flow through you to the people you serve, no matter their circumstance. Teach them how to cultivate their own personal relationship with the Lord with total dependency on the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You must understand that they belong to the Lord. They belong to the Lord, and you are just a shepherd over the flock. Give them freedom to work out issues in their own hearts 
with the help of the Holy Spirit and let them do that without pressure and guilt. Give them the liberty to grow. And if they make mistakes, they have to, uh, you can guide them. But more importantly, they have the Holy Spirit to lead and guide them into all truth. Let their commitment to know more of God's love come from within. Be, be, becoming commitment, committed is not demanded. Because commitment that is demanded is never commitment, it's slavery. Commitment is a byproduct of love, yes. trust, yes. and emotional stability. We all have a decision to accept people the way they are. Because if they had to be cleaned up before they come to us, then why are we even here? You will be dealing with people who have real problems and have never succeeded at anything. And now you have to help them to consider doing things God's way, which will surely give them a desired outcome. Amen. So I want to thank all of you for listening. And if God has given something to you, a ministry that's birthed in your heart, something that is just burning and you don't really know what to do with it, you pray about it first, and then you talk to the pastors. We have associate pastors. Communicate. Every one of us has something to give. Everyone has something to give. So I thank you for listening. I thank you for your support. Babies, I love you. I'm so glad. I hope you're listening the whole way. Don't, don't stop when I get off the stage. You wait until pastor dismiss. I'm parenting, sorry. Y'all. Stay to the end. I love you guys. And I want to also just honor the guys that take care of my kids. They are just great. Abu, Isatu, Catherine, David, Daddy, Abbas. Hopefully I haven't left anyone out. I love you guys so much. And not just that you take care of them, but you've also allowed me to be a minister to you, to teach you the things of the Lord. And you are growing, and I see it. And we are all going to do this together. This is not my ministry. It is God's ministry. And we all get a a chance to serve. And I can't wait to see you guys. Love you, and God bless. And Teresa, could you um, display the video so I can show the folks what's happening in Sierra Leone right now. Thank you all so much. All right. This is Elgin's last visit to Sierra Leone, talking to the kids. This was our Christmas, Christmas party. We're serving and we invited the family of the children because we knew this was their very last Christmas with them before they came into the ministry. So I asked them all to be a part of it. And these are my girls. Um, Aisha Tu and Abu are the ones with them at home right now. And um, Catherine, the lady next to me, she's a great friend that serves. We have two beautiful pups. We love them. The kids love them. And these are the other set of children at the orphanage that live close to the village. So they come to a different location daily. So, and these, they are ready for school, going to school, and I capture the picture. Their very first Christmas tree. Aww. And they had this Christmas, past Christmas. They just won a, a football match yesterday, and they sent this picture to me. <laughs> the babies of Ekmoy. This is our youngest. I.B. Suleiman. Now this one, he's going places. Here's my preacher. Our dear puppies, Bintu. Now this is something I'm very, I'm so proud about. The children grew all of this. We have our farm and all of the things you see, well not the back, but these are food that we can actually consume. (laughs) But we have peppers, we have okra, we have cassava leaves, we have corn, we have avocado, we have plantains, we have yam, we have, we want the children to eat well. So we are growing the food so we're not eating things that are full of process. So now this is the plastering. What you see happening is the walls, oh, it's going so fast. This is, of course, the consumerized unit. 
um, for electricity, the place has been wired right now. So we will have electricity very soon. And the walls, what we do in Sierra Leone, the walls are smooth with cement and sand. And once that happens, you go back and you, you prime and paint. So we are almost at the point of priming to paint. So we are very, very close. And once again, it's the consumerized unit for the electrical. Everything has been prepped. And we are building a wall. We're not just building a fence. It is a wall, a 10-foot wall, as you see there, with all these, these um, iron rods will be erected. And we will also have electric fence around the building so we don't have those ugly barbed wire and things that are, I, I don't like those things. So yeah, that's where we are. All of this land has been leveled. And right now it's raining in Sierra Leone, so it's really hard. We are fighting against the, the rain to take care of the, 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 the property so it's ready by December because it's going to rain all the way till November. So we are, we are a little bit behind, but I trust God. He's God of miracles. He's going to make it happen. We didn't have money for, for metal scaffolds, so we had to use wood for the people. Everything you see that has been done is by hand. Wow. No machines. The only time we used machines was to clear the land and a few things here and there, but everything from the foundation, and this is, uh, I believe, a 14,000 square foot building and has the capacity to house about um, 200 children. We don't want that many because it, it would feel so institutionalized. But we just believe God is going to expand this ministry. Our hope for ECMO is to one day have businesses in that country and we can build other places so the kids can be in a home and not an institution. And because of the age issues, we have children that are approaching 18. And in Sierra Leone and in most places, they cannot be in an orphanage. So we are revising the name in Sierra Leone. And Pastor Regina, you will love this. It's not going to be called an orphanage. It will be called a children's home. Amen. So that would allow us to keep them. So thank you guys for watching. God bless you. I love you guys. And I, I don't take it lightly, everything you guys are doing to help us. And I know that the goal is big, where we need to be to finish this building. But nothing is too hard for God. Hey. We're going to be Hallelujah. receiving a special offering for Esther Kaka Memorial Outreach. You want to say a few things, Regina, first before yeah, I give you um, the mechanics? You know mechanics? what, let me, let me just say this. Many of you will never be able to step foot on this property of Sierra Leone, but what you can do, that as you sow into this ministry, your seeds are being planted there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So if you can't go, you can still plant seeds and be a part of this. And you just sow it right into uh, Esther Kai, Kai And you know what? Let me tell you this. The Bible says that you give into a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. And some are already lifting your hands. If you want an envelope for, for giving, go ahead and you can lift let, your hands. And but let, let, me, me, let me remind of that. For yeah, go ahead with that. that first. On the envelopes, you do the same way you do the checks. You can see up, uh, uh, Stephanie, if you'll put up the check template, please. Okay, uh, got it. The check, it doesn't show the four column on the screen there. They're working on okay. it. Okay. Just to, to All right, so the ch any check will be written to the Solid Rock of Atlanta, and in the four column, you're putting Esther Kai Kai Memorial Outreach. You can also put in, in parentheses, ECMOI, E-K-M-O-I, capital E, capital K, capital M, capital O, capital I, which is an abbreviation, and put parentheses around it if you want to, but that's what needs to go on there. It's got to be checked, needs to be made out to the church, and ECMOI, or e Esther Kai, Kai Memorial Outreach um, Incorporated is what the complete thing of it is, but it's um, same thing on envelopes. When you take an envelope, you're giving cash, you'll just take a circle, um, offering on there and then write you can write ECMOI down on there and, and uh, on your gift 
Also, if you want to go online now, on the Solid Rock of Atlanta, Teresa has put up on our, our um, giving page. So you go to thesolidrockofatlanta.org, go over to giving, and normally you have, drop, you have a drop down that says tithes and offerings. She has now put temporarily for a limited amount of time today, Esther Kaikai Memorial Outreach on there in parentheses, ECMO. So you can do it online if you if you want to right now. Go ahead, Mae. You know, again, I was saying, you know, the Bible says if you give to a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. Whatever, you know, everything that they're sowing into this ministry that Eldon and Mazare are, are doing, when you sow into that, you reap a reward also. And not that that's why we do it. We do it to be a blessing. However, God wants you blessed. You can't ever out give in the kingdom of God. So when you sow and you become a part of this, when you can't go there, your seeds are being sown into the ground there, and they will produce a harvest in these children's lives. And I tell you what, I am so excited about what's, what t testimonies we're already hearing about these wonderful children. And, you know, I, I know, you know, Van, I want to try to go there for the, for the uh, opening service and, and dedication of the building. But I'm telling you right now, y'all, let's, let's make them proud. Let's really do this. Let's make the Lord proud. Let's sow into this because, you know, I don't know about y'all, but I want to be a part of seeing these children come out of the streets and do great things for the kingdom of God. I guarantee you there are going to be many of them that will be ministers and evangelists and, and pastors and teachers and prophets. They will do so many things for Sierra Leone. So I'm telling you, let's do this. You know, years ago, my, my brother who is, he um, is about 14 months older than I am. And when he was 18, and he's 66 this summer, when he was 18, he became a missionary. The first place he was sent to, and he said, I want you to send me a place because I'm single that you don't send families to. And they sent him to Sierra Leone. That was the first place he went, and he was there for many years. So it's a special place in our family. He's been all over. He, he's, he went to China, and, and when he met his wife, his wife's family were missionaries in Africa and, and Kenya. And she was going to a Bible college in Canada, didn't meet her, but then he ended up meeting her family. They introduced them, and they got married, and then went to China and had two babies. He said, so, you know, our babies were made in China. So, <laughs> but anyway, but he's been all over Africa and he's been all over. He, he was in um, Sri Lanka. Is that how you say it? Sri Lanka um, for uh, the last place that they were. And now they're here for, uh, they come back for uh, a few months and, and, and they're with the Assemblies of God. But that was the first place he went. And he would tell us many stories about Sierra Leone. And anyway, it's such an honor for us to all be connected and to know that y'all listen. I mean, they can get support from everywhere, but I think the best place for them to get it is from their church family. We are their family. We are. And so it's up to us, man. Let's support this. Let's support this. Let's do our very best to give them our very best. And, and you know what? Then God will give you his very best. And that's everything on a cattle. cattle I mean, how, what is the scripture? He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. So and the earth is his and the, and fullness, the fullness thereof. thereof. Yes. So anyway, he wants you to be blessed. So you can't ever out give. I don't care what you give. You watch and see how God's going to bless your socks off. Amen. Hallelujah. So they've got it up now. Oh, well, they got it up here. Okay, so, um, and we'll get it put up on the, the screen for what you put. Um, and I'll mention it again if you're writing a check. It's to the Solid Rock of Atlanta in your four column, Esther Kai Kai Memorial Outreach or Egmoy, you could put down there. Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to pray over the tithes or pray over this special offering, and then uh, we'll call you up to, to, um, to put in one of these buckets up here any cash or uh, any. Um, checks that you would put in there and like I said you can go online right now to the Solid Rock of Atlanta if you're watching on live stream you can do the same thing go to the Solid Rock of Atlanta dot org and then look for giving and add it temporarily for the next uh, little while it says 
it says tithes and offerings normally on there, but it'll say Ek Boy or the, the Esther Kai, Kai Memorial Outreach. All right, Father, in Jesus' name, thank Lord, you, we Jesus. thank you for the opportunity to sow into this great work, Lord, is making such Hallelujah. a difference, Lord, in the country of Sierra Leone, Father. Thank you, Lord Hallelujah. Jesus, Father. You love these children. You love these uh, women, Lord. You love these uh, families, Father. We just thank you right now, Lord, for Elgin and Mazaray, Father, the, the way that these children look at them as, as mommy and dad, daddy, Father. That's just precious, Father, and we just thank you, Lord, that they are not fatherless and motherless right now because they have Elgin and Mazaray, Father. That stigma does Hallelujah. not belong to them. Thank it you, cannot Lord. hang around their neck. And they will grow up, Lord, to know who they are in Christ, Lord, and to hold their heads high knowing they are more than conquerors. Jesus was the conqueror, but they're more than conquerors, Father. Lord, I just thank you that they're not just learning about religion, Lord. They're learning the gospel that's almost too good to be true news, the good news, Lord. Things that many of us, uh, not me included, but Regina, had learned along the way and different ones along the way that they have to unlearn a few things, Father, and see where they, where, where, where they haven't understood certain things. Father, I just thank you right now, Lord, that, that, that they know the truth from the inception, Father. They know how powerful the word is. They know that by his stripes they were healed. They know that no weapon formed against them can prosper, Lord. And they know that Jesus carried everything and bore everything at the cross, the finished work of the cross, Lord. And they can walk in divine health, Lord. They can walk in prosperity. They can walk in all the precious promises of God. We thank you for it, Lord. And we sow into that uh, ministry right now with joy and gladness in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. If you're bringing down cash, if you're bringing down checks for ECMOI, Esther Kai Kai Memorial Outreach, please do so at this time. And before we dismiss, we will be praying over Elgin and Mazare. So just, yes. work, and then we will dismiss the service. So I'm so glad it worked out for us to be able to do this, to have them come today and, and be a blessing to them. So exciting. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. And they didn't have but a few weeks to start with, but they're going to take about five days. And, and uh, Daddy, Daddy's, go Daddy's going to take Mama off by herself and romance her a little bit <laughs> while she's here in this country. Is that, isn't that the right thing to do? Isn't Je Amen. Jesus is happy about that, isn't he? I'm telling you. We're going to step right. down here. Elgin and Mazare, y'all come on up. I want y'all to stand up and stretch your hands out to Elgin and Mazare, if you would. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Woo, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead, baby. Mm, you go ahead. All right, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, what a couple, Lord, that you brought together from the foundations of the earth. They were in your heart from the foundations of the earth, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that, that Esther Kai Kai had this in her heart, Lord. Yeah. She may not have had all the details and it may not have looked exactly like it is now, Lord, but you threw her seed, Lord. Mazare, Father, has oh, come yeah. to pass. It's come quickly coming to pass. And Elgin, Lord, was they, when, when they hooked up and they married, Father, and they were just, both, both of them used to work, for, Elgin does work for Delta and Mazare used to work for Delta years ago, Father. Thank you, Father, for, thank you for these flying privileges, Lord, that have come in so handy for them, Lord. That it's not just about going on a vacation and not just doing something to have fun, Lord, but they can go and make a tr tremendous difference in, in a whole country, Lord. And, Father, and do it on our behalf, too, Lord. Take us with him, Lord, through our, our impartations of finances and prayers, Lord. We thank you, Father, Lord. We thank you for the people of Sierra Leone, Lord. And we thank you that even the government, government recognizes what's going on with this, with Esther Kai, Kai Memorial Outreach. Thank you, Father. Lord, we just pray continued blessings over them. Everything they touch is prospering, Lord. And Father, that, that uh, uh, day in December when they want to have groundbreaking and move forward and have a, a dedication, Father, that will not be like some fleeting star that just or some uh, destination that keeps getting moved. It's, Father, it's in stone, Lord. 
And we call it forth, Lord, and we thank you all the, the manpower, all the pro financial provision, everything that have need of is being added unto them, Lord. In Jesus' name, with record, record numbers coming through for them on the finances. In Jesus' name, and we all say amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, before we head out, make sure you love on them. And um, I, I wanted to say, too, anybody that wants to have their babies dedicated or children dedicated, that's going to be on Mother's Day. What a special day to dedicate children. So make sure you sign up on the sign-up sheet, sign sheet back there. And uh, also, if you want to be water baptized, that's going to be next Sunday after the service. So anybody that wants to be water baptized, please see Teresa. Where is Teresa? She's in the back again. Okay. So... You'll see Teresa in the back of the sanctuary back here um, before you leave because she needs to explain to you what you need to bring next Sunday for your water baptism, okay? So um, make sure you step back there and see Teresa for the, uh, the things and the instructions for water baptism. That is next Sunday immediately following the service. And you're thinking, where do we do the water baptism? We actually, there is a tank back there that is also for communion. And we will roll it up here and we will fill it up with water. And Van will stand behind you and, and he will baptize you. It is, it, we've done it before. And, 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 and when I let you down, I'll go like this, like let you in the water and I'll say, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. You go, and I'll, I'll get you up just in the nick of time. No. <laughs> just teasing, just teasing. I've, no. I've done no. countless baptisms. No. No casualties whatsoever. <laughs> and we're, golly, no. that we know of. No, holy. Anyway, so remember. Uh, somebody make sure that Teresa is back here and that she can talk to those about the water baptism. Y'all, we love you so much. We got lots going on. And we want to, yes, we didn't say, oh, yes, yeah, she said the children have said, children, we are telling you goodbye in Sierra Leone. Yes. And everybody watching online, All you we love you children, so much. We Esther love Kai you. Kai hey, Memorial wait a minute, Outreach. wait a minute, we before you, you get rid of them, hey, we send you our hugs. Ready, everybody? Ah, there you go. Hugs you get our hugs. from hugs Atlanta, Georgia, right USA, That's the right. Solid Rock of Atlanta. We love you. All right, love we say goodbye to, to life.